Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and today I'm going to show you how you can use UUIDs for your JPA entities. So usually you may be used to having integers or any numeric values for the IDs or even strings if you're using emails or usernames to identify your entities. But I also like to use UUIDs to make sure that the entities cannot be enumerated and to also, if, if you have entities that you want to share eventually publicly without any, any security, then having UUIDs is, is, a, is a nice way of using that directly. So yeah, let me show you how you can use um, auto-generated UUIDs in JPA. So it's gonna be a short one, let's code. Okay, there we are in the IDE. Um, what do we need? So we are working with Spring Boot 272 and I brought in the Spring Boot Starter Data JPA because we're working with JPA and also the H2 database, uh, which makes it easy to work with, especially if we don't need any real persistence. So let's start with the entity directly. Let's go. Um, I want to model users. So I'm using something called a user entity. So that needs to be an entity. And yeah, that's just kind of like, I always prefer to, to specify the table name because I don't want it to be called user entity um, in the database. Um, so, and now how are we gonna do this? So how can we create UUIDs? So first of all, uh, let's do well equals zero and this should be our ID. So we first have to import the UUID and then we annotate it with ID and generated value. And now the only real probably new bit here is I'm specifying the type. So we go with type and then it's gonna be type equals or hibernate um, type UUID character type. And that's, that's the whole thing. So if you just wanted to know how it works, um, you can stop the video here because this is all there is to it. Um, but just for the sake of the completeness, I will just uh, finish the entity at a repository and just have a quick test, making sure that it all works. So yeah, let's let's finish this example. Um, let me also have a um, a name. Um, no, let's just make a late in it or a name. String. Um, and for the entities, we usually have to provide uh, equals and hash code. And uh, the way I do this is just checking for the equality of the reference because that will be true. Or if um, the other equals null or uh, so I'm also checking the Hibernate proxies here. So Hibernate get class um, this um, is not the same as Hibernate get class other. So then it's false. So no, that's not correct. Let's do it like this. So once these checks have passed, I can safely uh, cast the other as a user entity. And now the, um, the compiler knows that it's a user entity and I can just use it as it is and can just tell it we return ID equals other ID. Um, that's equals then of course we also have to overwrite hash code and we have to use the same properties so i'm just doing it like this uh, doing id hash code um let's also overwrite it to string function so we have something that we can can show for which looks a little bit nicer um i don't have to provide the return type necessarily we can just go with uh, it's id and name so that's the entity. It's pretty straightforward, really. The, the, the only relevant bit is um, specifying the type here. And though that looks like it's always gonna be null because I have a while here, it's gonna be um, set to the correct type when we, when we persist entities. And we, we're gonna test that. So um, let's come up with a very simple user uh, repository, which is an interface using the repository annotation. Um, and we're gonna pick the CRUD repository. And it's gonna map from, oh, it's confusing this. Just making sure I'm having the right one, yeah. So it's user entity 
and give you ID. And that's, that's really all there is to it. Import, and that's the repository, it's super simple. And now let's, let's just write um, a real quick, not a test, but let's run some code on start uh, equals command line runner. We inject the repository, repo user repository. And now we just do, let's create 10 random users. So we just call repo save user entity apply. Um, and what we're gonna apply is we change the name to uh, user and simply the count. So that's the current, current index. That should save the entities. And as you can see, I'm not specifying any UUID here. So that's all good. And now let's just do repo find all. And then for each, we're gonna do a print line. So that's just really to confirm that it all works. There's, there's nothing special going on here. So let's run this and see, see what happens. And there we go. Application is starting as expected. And here we go. So we can see 10 users have been created. That's their name and that's their UUID. Um, yeah, so that, that was a quick tip for this video. It really was just a short one. I hope it was still useful. Any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one.